Uh, this is Three Counties Radio. I'm Ronnie Barber. We are doing a radio programme. Uh, the number of families who have third-generation household is rising. This is where the family house stays in family ownership. But is keeping a house in your family a good investment? Friend of the show, Jonathan Davies from Jonathan Davies Wealth Management. Jonathan, welcome, my friend. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, yeah, I know your reticence about buying uh, uh, houses. You're, a bit, you're historical on it. Um, you don't like, you think renting's the right way. What about this, Jonathan? Um, I think it's uh, very sensible. I mean, clearly... Um, if someone a generation or two um, bought a house for I don't know one or two thousand pounds, and now it's two or three hundred thousand um, pounds, then it's eminently sensible that uh, the new generation doesn't go out and borrows. £200,000 from some lender uh, and, quote, buys, unquote, uh, another property. Of course, keep it in the family. Just watch out for inheritance tax. Yeah, um, we'll go to that in a second. In Germany, this is the thing that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of built into the fabric of their society that you effectively, even if the house has still got a mortgage on it, you inherit the house and the mortgage. Yeah, there is another issue, though, peculiar to Germany um, in relation to, to, well, every country that we know of. Um, They haven't had much of a house price bubble. And because they haven't had one, um, there hasn't been an absolute uh, necessity, a mania, to get involved in buying more houses. So they've just stayed with the ones that they've got. But I'll tell you, if they had a bubble, if they had prices soaring like we had for 20 years, um, then they'd be doing exactly the same as we. Um, Inheriting tax, tax, Mm. you talked about there, John. What what does that mean in terms of a a family or a a son or a daughter taking on the property that... uh, maybe their their folks passed away what does it mean yes um, all the assets of the deceased are added together um, normally of course the house is going to be the biggest asset um, uh, and you add it all together and you take off um, if you if it gets to above 650,000 pounds then you're liable for inheritance tax that is the recipients of the assets the recipients of the estate are liable for tax on the excess over £650,000. Now, we're in the south of England. Um, you could have a, a four- or five-bedroom house that was bought 50 years ago. It could be £500,000 uh, without too much difficulty in many parts of Beds, Hearts and Bucks. Um, another £150,000 um, of savings and investments, sure, you could be looking at inheritance tax. So, in other words, um, uh, the, the, the parents and the children need to sit down um, before tax is payable to see what can be done about securing the position and reducing inheritance tax when the fateful day finally arises. And it's not difficult to mitigate inheritance tax. Just speak to a professional. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So, and of course, you actually have to sit there and talk about that, you know, that sad day, and we're quite, we're quite bad at doing that anyway. It, it's very important, and it's also very difficult. Of course it is, um, because let's face it, who wants to talk about their death? I mean, that's the reality. But at the same time, um, you know, it's not just about tax. It's also about uh, ensuring that the estate goes to the people in exactly the proportions that you want it to go to. Um, So you need to get your will sorted out, and you also need to get your IHT, your inheritance tax, sorted out. And all you have to do is be prepared to think what is necessary think the difficulty and go through the process. Jonathan, great to talk to you again. Jonathan Davies from Jonathan Davies Wealth Management.